I thought, here I am trying to catch some fish with a feeder on the bottom, about two feet out from the bank. But I was wondering, I wonder would they come up on the top? Could I catch them off the surface? Well, if you've got something as complicated as a slice of bread, the answer to that is yes. Guys, this is welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. You're catching me at the back end of a mammoth session I've had fishing. And I just want to show you, close range fishing, you know I love this margin fishing. I'm going to be fishing just off this stage and I'm not even going to be casting out. Check it out. Action all the way. And then I'm going to try and catch some fish off the top on bread and get them up on the surface. I've been catching them on the bottom, but I feel they will come up if I can put enough bread in. I'm fishing the method feeder which you can use these type of moulds or you can just do what I'm doing and squeeze it around there and then put your hook bait, just press it into the top. That's all I'm doing, I'm not actually using the mould anymore because the fish are going loopy loo. We'll just see if we can hook one to camera. Just do not Take your eyes off of that rod top. I'm going to hold it. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> oh my god. It's suicide watch out there, honestly. Well, I'm having a great time here. I am at, for those who want to know, <clears throat> I think it's called Home Home Farm, Home Grove, one of the lakes. It's at Tobber. Tobber fishery, which is always good to fish out. I'll get this one off and then I'm going to try coming them on the surface because although I've been doing really well on the bottom I figure I could chum them up I might be able to see a bigger fish. You're catching a sort of mix of commons and mirrors quite a lot of mirrors I have to say. That's just a small common. Now let's see if I can get some bread out and get them off the top the most exciting way of catching them. I've done an all-night carp session last night, fished through the night, yesterday, then the night, and then I'm back on another lake. I haven't slept really that great. A few hours, I think I've got a few hours. So I'm going to be putting some bread there and they're going to go nuts. I just know even though it's being fed on the bottom. So get yourself a loaf of bread. It, you know, it costs nothing. Check your fishery rules. Yes, you can use bread. No, you can't. Whatever. And we'll throw it out. And if I don't see any big ones coming up in this lake, I'm going to try the other lake over there, which is a match lake, where they do get bigger fish. Could be a big one in here, could be a big one with my name on it. Let's just get a whack of bread out there. 
This one's handy because there's no ducks here. Do you know what I mean? There's fish coming up already. That's because I've baited there. I'm going to chuck some around the corner. The wind is coming off my back, which is fine. And that's going to drift the bread that way over there. Trouble is, if I go that side, I want to cast back this way. I'm going to be casting into the wind. Um, and I've got to keep winding all the time to keep pace with you know, the bread will be casting out and be coming towards me. This way, it's going from here out. It's not even going to go that far. I can, I can tell you now that those fish are going to start coming up. You can put flavouring on bread. No reason why not. Now, there's a fish moving. I've probably done as good on bread as any other of the fancy baits, I've got to be honest. But the secret is finding them first, getting them chummed up, what we call chummed up. They are. That's a bigger fish over the back there. So it's probably five, six, seven pounds. Ordinarily, I'll be using the regular Avon section to the Avon rod, but because I've been in quiver tip, I'm going to make do with the quiver tip rod. I don't have the other section with me. Five, six pound line straight through to a single barbless hook, a piece of crust. Now, you can either, I'll catch one first if I can, I just give it one or two little dabs like that, and then I'm just gonna flick it out there and they are gonna muller that, I can assure you. Wait till the crust disappears, because they know there's a line attached to that. There's a bigger fish across the back, I'm gonna stand up for that one. Very dark fish over there, is he any bigger? Can you see him cruising? It's just. Missed him. There. He should find that. Too late, another one's found it. No, he's a bit he's a bit slow. Let's go over the back. And the bread comes off. They scoffed all that bread I've thrown in, guys. I'll just go into it once, rolling it, turn it, tap it, and then sort of bring the the shank down so that just that the hook shows. This is just for free lining close in. And I'm looking along the margins. There was a slightly bigger fish down there. Come on, Mr. Fish. Come on, small one. A small fish, but listen. Oh, he's going well for a small one. And that was the wind coming behind me. I could drift all out there if I wanted to, but then the farther away you go with the crust, the harder it will be to hook the fish. Well, normally I wouldn't have this giant carp net, but I've been doing an overnight carp session and uh, didn't bring the match net. But you can see a piece of bread, people, a piece, a slice, a portion of bread about 60p for a loaf in the supermarket. Here he is. Looks like a common. Now, he hasn't got any belly at all, that one, look. A long, thin one, almost like a wild carp, but it is a common carp. Let's get him back. Now, I have seen fish moving down there. In fact, I can see them moving. They're fairly sure they're all going to be much of a muchness. Oh, <laughs> it's a small fish. You can see the action you can now just using bread, floating crust on the surface. Of course, you can use dog biscuits to chum them up, but I find bread is that cheap. Very often you'll get, I think, a better fish. Not in here, this is a match lake, by the way. It's one of Tobber Fisheries. Match lakes. This is another smallish fish. I'll try one more after this. This one looks like a mirror. Well, it's, it's like a leather. You don't see. You don't actually see leather carp anymore. You don't seem to come through the system.
just say those who don't know. The leather cup like this, calm down. All scale, uh, no scales along it whatsoever, completely smooth. And they were bred, they were bred by the monks to stop scaling the fish. Stop, so you didn't have to scale the fish. You can see on the back there, he's got, uh, you can see on the back he's got a ridge of scales. And if that was, say, a leather along there, if that was a leather along there and just scales along the back, I'd be calling that a saddleback, what we used to call a saddleback. But if I took that away, it would be, any scales in it, it would be a leather. And I like that yellowing tailing off to the gold of the tail there. Quite unusual. Let's get him back and try for one more. I'm still fancying those ripples down there. And a lot of the time, you know, one small carp coming up. Oh, look at that. I could do this all day long. Something about fishing, catching fish off the surface. I'm going to catch this one, guys, and then clear all this clobber away. And I'm going to go and try the lake behind. See if I can get a. I think this one's a slightly bigger fish. I think, tell a lie, I think this is. Wow, that's a big swirl there. Yeah, it's a common carp, a little bit bigger. I could do with a small net, match net. Here he comes, here he comes. There he goes. Didn't like the extra pressure then. I think a lot of time, you know, they match fish, they know what the net is. There we go. So you can see the sort of fun you can have with a loaf of bread. No, I'm going to make a wild statement and say that's another lean common. Why are the uh, mirrors more of a belly to them? That's the second common that's been pretty narrow. Here you go, buddy. Right, I think I'm going to pack up and I'm going to go over and have a scouting and patrolling session on the other lake. Well, I've come up to this uh, top lake here, but it's right in the wind. There's one smooth sort of slick pool here. There's a couple of ripples. Oh, it's a bird. I'm looking for ripples. I don't see any fish cruising whatsoever. But I'm thinking maybe if I catapult some loose bread out there, it'll either drift right down here to my feet or it's going to go in by these rushes and along that fall over edge down there and I might pick one or two fish off. They've always got a match over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eight, ten, eight, ten, I don't know, about 20, 25 people. Might be interesting to see what's come out of there but it is very windy. Right, let's get some bread in the water. Peg 62, is that going to be lucky? Now if you're throwing out loose bits like this, Oh, there's a splash. If you're throwing out loose bits in a windy day, very often it'll pay you, I'll turn this way so you hear the wind, just to pinch it a little bit, and then it should spread out like that. It gives you a bit of bulk for throwing, but it will still break up. Very windy. Might have made the wrong decision here. Well, I've got the camera around here. The uh, small camera memory card is full. Batteries are running out, so I'm going to run this camera, but it's going to have to be a little light music over the day because it's just going to be a howling wind of the mic. But I have, in fact, seen one fish just come down here. So, you can see here it's very difficult with all the ripples to actually see when I pull the camera back where those fish can be. You can obviously get them coming up and you don't actually see it, but it's going to push it in down to the right hand side of the rushes and then hopefully work it further down the lake. I'm casting out very close, missing a fish. What a good job, there's no sound. It probably wouldn't be good language, but then boom, fish on in the margins. And you can see that where that slightly slacker area is, 
the bread holds up a little bit longer and doesn't get pushed in close to the rushes. But listen, even if it goes into the rushes, you want to sort of listen because very often you can hear them slurping bread off the top when it's drifted right in tight. It's actually touching those rush stems. Well, it's halfway decent fishes, my guy. Listen, if you use pieces of bread, you don't need huge, great big bags of ground bait here. If you just go to virtually any commercial water and, you, and if they allow it, you can use floating crust on the top. It actually sort of cuts the corners because if you don't see any fish taking bread off the surface, then you can float fish or ledger on the bottom. If they come up on top, you can catch them that way. If you'll lay still. Floating crust just well worth the move, wasn't it guys? I mean it was really well worth that move from that lake to this lake. There he is. Big mouth, he can take a big piece of crust. Great fish. Well that was worth that move that lake. Let's get him back. So I basically got several fish, including a ghosty, off the top like that, and that was just a bonus to end off a morning's fishing. So when you go fishing on the next trip, never leave home without some of the white stuff. Now, something interesting I had was when I went up helping Mike out on a bushcraft show, there was a stand there. It was drawing me like a magnet. Hmm, I wonder what could be on there. Of oh, course, you've had horrendous weather, but they've got a show going on here with a talk about, I think, an expedition guy over there. He's telling you about his uh, expedition up the Zambezi or somewhere. I've got an expedition. It's over to the mead stall and talk to the gentleman who has mead apparently on tap. Now this is the sort of stall you need to come up to, guys. So, traditional mead. All right. The oldest alcoholic drink is making a comeback for the oldest man here. That's me. That's me. <laughs> So guys, here I am. I am at the traditional oak aged mead. I won't be able to say that. Stone Circle Mead Company. Stone Circle Mead Company, as you can right. see. Various different go. flavors. So how is mead made? Okay, so it's uh, uh, traditionally by fermentation, not the, uh, the fortified version that you can often come across in supermarkets and whatnot. It's uh, fermented traditionally with, uh, with yeast. And um, so, of course, a lot of the sugars are turned to alcohol. Uh, and this is what we get. So now this would be sold by the cask, by the bottle. How would you? How would people buy this? They would have. Um, well, here we go. How do you sell it? Here we go. In the hall. Oh. Now, uh, if you were uh, in uh, Anglo-Saxon times, uh, you'd come into someone's home and you'd be presented with a mead horn, full of mead, absolutely to the brim. And the whole thing is that, of course, if you spill a drop of this, it's a mortal insult to your host. Oh. So what have you got to do with this? If you give it to you, you've got to drain the whole thing. Okay. So would that come under the classification of almost a beer? Would no. You, what, um, it's not. Okay, a lot of people make this mistake. Yeah, that's um, why I'm asking. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, when you take honey out of the hive, the, yeah. f the, the, the free-flowing honey was used for food. It was a delicacy. The, the pressings from the combs you turn into mead and the washings where you literally get the honeycomb and dunk it in a, bu in a bucket of water and, and wrap it around, get the last bits of honey out. That was turned into honey beer or braggots in English, braggot in the Welsh. And that's uh, what we call small beer. That's what they, they, they drink instead of water because the water in towns you couldn't drink. Uh, so this would be... A pint would be strong. Is it like cider? Is it strong? No, it's uh, it's. Th this would be the the uh, the drink for feasts and high days and holidays for the nobility to drink. So it's a very posh drink. Uh, the beer, the honey beer, would have been for the for the the hoi polloi or the, really? the rest of really? it. Yeah. Am I am I classified as a hoi polloi? I think. No, you're. you're, you're what do you think? Uh, is it worth me having a totally awesome fishing sample? <laughs> I mean, would you buy a fishing rod? Would you buy a fishing rod and not want to test it? Would you want to buy some maggots and tell it? No, you wouldn't, would you? No. Okay, so it's, uh, this is a traditional, well, most traditional mead. Honey, water, yeast, bit of Sicilian lemon juice for balance. 
Was it what you expected? No, it doesn't taste sort of alcoholic. It tastes, um, it's got a taste to it. There's the is danger. It, yeah, that's right. But it is so you, 12 points. <laughs> 12.7%. Yes, you can drink it very easily. It, it does slip down very nicely. Yes, 12.7%. Yeah. So, really? we, we, yeah, it's kind of a strongish wine. Yeah, it didn't taste it to me. You know, just thought, oh. Because, oh, you know why? It's because, guys, as a pint of doom man, it was... <laughs> I'm thinking of a pint of doom, aren't I? I think, oh, it's a thimble full of doom. No, no, it could no. be a bit. bit it's, a, it's a sipping drink, not a quaffing drink. Was yeah. I told there's no hangover? Uh, it's it, well or limited. Uh, well, you'd have to drink an awful lot of it. I mean, because we don't. We, there's no. There's very few toxins in it. Yeah. <laughs> um, there we go. So that was what did I just drink then? That was the traditional. So it's honey, water, yeast, but it's a Sicilian lemon. This one's the old serum, which is made with cooking apples and honey. Yeah. So this is more medieval in style. So they would have crushed up whatever fruits, flowers were in season at the time, mixed it with the honey, make the honey go further, add complexity, add flavour. Ah, so suggestion. try this one. Now, just to point out, guys, so one, two, three, four, five, there's six barrels I've got to try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's a different taste. Isn't it? Very different. Yeah, yeah. And that one's really good with so strong cheeses. And No, no, that's, uh, that's a medieval-style one that's made with cooking apples. So we'll try on the big three. How about that? that just is, get that was, one that more. That was different. I'll tell you... Uh, probably for me, let's do it that way. Probably for me, that was uh, uh, more. Uh, I like the taste of that one better. Yeah, yeah. Do you like a dry? Uh, is that more yeah, I, like, I have dry wines, but so it's, uh, well, let's if you try don't mind. A uh, really dry one. That's, uh, okay. That's our Plum and Damson, which is uh, um, obviously it's got the astringency of the plum in it. If you can imagine yeah. eating a plum, it's got a bit of. Uh, uh, don't get astringency the smell of it, but then. No. Yes. No. Number number two. That's your. <laughs> yeah, I would say that number two. Yeah. I really okay. like the, the the apple one with uh, strong cheeses or duck and goose that kind of thing. Yeah. It's got the acidity to it, so it, it cuts. You know, but this one, uh, yeah, is the granddaddy of mulled wines. Where they got the idea from for mulled wine? So when they stopped being able to get hold of spiced mead, they yeah. started putting spices in red wine. So this is the granddaddy of that. Should I take it or not, guys? Listen, I've been watching Michael stand for ages in the rain. I, I feel I deserve it. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That's totally different. Different again. That is yeah. absolutely different, isn't it? So you can serve that one cold, um, but you can also... It, Thank it, you very much. It'd be the traditional Anglo-Saxon winter warmer. So you'd give, get a cup of hot yeah. mead given to you as you, when you walk in to someone's uh, home. You'd be presented with a cup of hot mead and it would chase the winter away. It's a sort of... Clovey, like cloves. It's got cloves in it. Yeah, oh, it's got cloves in it. Yep. Oh, Anything I'm else? Totally denuded of yeah. taste. No. Nope. That's brilliant. No, Cinnamon, brilliant. nutmeg, cloves, and ginger. Yeah. Other oh, four spices. Yeah. yeah. So, how long have you been uh, working on this? As I say, I've been making mead for the past 35 years, on and off. Uh, started in Llangollen in North Wales in the 90s. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, started the company again a few years ago, and uh, just recently opened our new meadery in Wrexham. And how old would that be, you know, when you say recent? Because it takes time to prepare everything? It does. It takes us two and a half, two, two and a half years to get it into the bottle. Wow. So it's a, lo it's a real labour of love. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it takes a long time to ferment, and then you've got to uh, chill it down, you've got to age it in oak, and age it in the bottle, and yeah. all the whole thing's a very long process. And mead is, it just takes its sweet time, yeah. literally. Yeah. <laughs> very good, guys. I appreciate that. If you ever get to one of these shows... Look these guys up, try this mead. I can vouch for it. Two and four. I see only I see never mind what's in them. I like two and four. Thanks very much guys. Thank you very much. Good to meet you. Guys, I'm on the other side of the stand now. And look who's rocked up to get served. I mean it's not fair, is it, look? Look, 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 so look, this look, is, look, look, look. What's all this bangles? about? The What's all this about? The, uh, cinnamon, <laughs> nutmeg. Thank you very much. I like that. That's a nice sort of That's wintery. Yeah. yeah. Crop. You can warm that up. Or yeah. Have it over ice. It's almost like a mold. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, that's the granddaddy of mold wine. Yeah. It's nice. Is that, where it originated that, that, that's, from. A, that's the best one. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. That's when you liked. This one's the one I like, which is the rhubarb. But the Yule is pretty much predominantly yeah, most people's favourite because yeah. they always like it. Yeah. No worries, Mike. Yeah. Um, because it's Christmas, that touch of Christmas. Yes, yes, I wine, see it, but then, yeah. People tend to think, you know, yes, right, right. Yeah, it's yeah. that, and that is where it originated from. <laughs> Hence, the honeymoon did, as, as you said earlier.
have to really pull it. Well, there you go, guys. A couple of films, a fishing one, a one that I found about mead, which I never knew, I have to say. Thanks for watching the TA Fishing and TA Outdoor Shows. Hit the subscribe button on both. And don't forget to look out for the usual Friday film. We're pumping out as many as we can at the moment. See you in the next one.